Hey class, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing one of my art history tutorial lessons. Uh, this is one of the things that I do in my class every, at least once a week. Usually for me it's a Wednesday thing. It's where we sit down, we look at a piece of artwork, we analyze it, we look at some facts, and we talk about what the artist was trying to achieve within that work. So today, I really want to work on a classic piece of artwork, something that we've all known, seen, and three quick facts about the Mona Lisa. All right, so Mona Lisa, and I've got a weird thing with this painting, is because uh, when I was teaching middle school, Mona Lisa it was like a classroom chant that I would do to get the kids to be quiet. So I really ingrained in all my students that name, and then it became a thing when we would do our history and I'd pull up that picture. It became this long, long discussion during class. I mean, uh, definitely wanted to kind of go over three facts that I went over with my class and bring them out to, to you guys as well so that all my classes can get a, a little bit of art knowledge under their belt. Okay, so number one, the big thing that I want everybody to know about the Mona Lisa is that that is not the only one. This Mona Lisa that you see here, the one that is hanging in the Louvre, painted by Leonardo da Vinci, is by far the most noted one. However, it is not the only one. There is another one. The other Mona Lisa is a younger version of her, and the younger version is called the Isleworth Mona Lisa. And I'm not 100% certain why it's called the Isleworth. I'll be working on that probably for a future video. But what I do want you to know is that there's more than one. Uh, this Isleworth Mona Lisa, it's a younger version of the Mona Lisa, and it shows a much more youthful skin, youthful eyes, and the background is just slightly changed up to from uh, from that of the traditional Mona Lisa. Now this one is owned by a private group. It's not owned by just one person, it's owned by a collection of people. And this was thought to actually be painted after he started working on the original Mona Lisa. And the reason being the conscious thought, now this is from an artist standpoint, is that Mona Lisa the younger youthful Mona Lisa might have been deemed the one that the person who was commissioning that artwork wanted. They didn't want some older lady painted on this painting. They wanted a more youthful, vibrant character in the image, and that's who they were trying to create. Uh, it could have been a mother and a daughter uh, comparison. If you The way that you look, if you look at some of the bone structure and the skin tones of the Isleworth versus the uh, traditional Mona Lisa, there is a little bit of change there. There's more youthfulness in the cheeks of the Alward Mona Lisa. There's a much lighter skin tone. The eyes have a much deeper color and resonance to them. That also might be the way that it was preserved and kept. Um, but then the traditional Mona Lisa, there is a much more structure to the hair that it's kind of thinner. It's a little bit uh, structured on the where the hairline is located. That could be more of an age thing. So... Da Vinci doing kind of the same character, kind of the same person, gives a little bit of change to that. All right, so number two, the second thing I want to go over with the Mona Lisa is the Mona Lisa has only been famous for about the last hundred years ish. It was not a famous painting prior to that. It was known in the art community. However, it became notoriety and fame because it was stolen back in 1911. Uh, I believe it was August. Uh, but there was a guy who was working at the Louvre. It was a complete inside job. And he stole the Mona Lisa, thought that it was just a, uh, it would be worth a lot of money. He was paid after a famous artist, Da Vinci. He was still a famous Renaissance artist. It was an old painting. Again, this is only 100 years ago. But it did not regain that notoriety, that fame, because from 1911 to 1913, the painting was missing. And as it was a one of the great Renaissance painters who, uh, it was his painting, it was stolen, it became international news everybody on the planet was notified that this painting was stolen out of the louvre this painting by leonardo da vinci this painting is is a is a masterwork a work of art and everybody needed to um to make sure that that was returned back to the louvre so in 1913 the entire world has become enamored with this story of this painting that was stolen and with that painting being stolen it then became notoriety gained all of its notoriety all of its fame and to this day we still see people who make copies and variations and artistic representations using the Mona Lisa as a base and it's further uh impacted its famousness and um and wonder into it's a great and fabulous painting because everybody's become enamored with this painting everybody sees it everybody knows about it everybody 
Uh, the third one, the last one that I would definitely want to go over, and this is an artistic thing from an art teacher, is the painting of the Mona Lisa is famous not because of the character or the person inside of the painting, but is the background of the painting. Now, from an artistic standpoint, from a art historical standpoint, the background of the painting, the landscape that da Vinci painted is one of the first that is a proper landscape where you have a foreground, a middle ground, a background where you can see a definitive perspective located behind a character, behind something uh, that actually shows proper space development. So we can see a road that cascades off to the left of the Mona Lisa from our perspective here. Uh, cascades from the left, there's a smaller bridge on the right hand side below her, just above her elbow that you can see as it descends back into the distance, there is a definitive, definitive points of Behind, as the piece goes back in the distance, the items get smaller. And that is actually a big change and a big turn of events in uh, painting, in, in the idea of artistic expression and, and how we have achieved that. Uh, because up until that point, when you looked at perspectives done, you looked at more of, a, of an awkward angle. The people... As, uh, as artisans, as illustrators, getting that perspective to draw back in the correct proportions was actually quite a difficult thing. There's a lot of math involved. Nowadays, when most art teachers are teaching perspective, I know myself the way when I teach it, um, I really inform students not by size and mathematical components so that as it goes back, it fits a certain size. I want them to as they're drawing these pieces out so that as it goes back in the distance it looks right to them uh, because that I think is a little more intrinsic to us that we can mathematically divide up a section and subtract it and it'll get small, smaller as it goes back in the distance then as again as it goes back in the distance you have these mountains you have uh, a mist there there's these elements of atmospheric changes that are going on in the background again these things weren't done prior to what da Vinci did in this painting. He was a real scientist in the art realm, uh, but then he would also take um, and study how water flowed, how water moved in a stream, how these things interact with each other, how the sky and clouds would change over time. And, and it came when certain winds came out of certain um, locations around him so that he could understand that if there's a sea that's about 50 miles away off to his west and the clouds are coming in from that direction. The clouds are going to have a different structure than if they're coming from over the mountains because uh, we could get in the whole thing of the water cycle and the water evaporates and goes up to clouds. The clouds change and then water comes back down to the earth by rain and all sorts of stuff. But that is what the man studied and that's what he brought into his art and that evolved the artistic understanding of what was going on in the world around us. So, Three things I want you again to take away from this little uh, art history tutorial. One, the Mona Lisa is not the only one. There are two of them. Uh, the painting itself is being housed with a consortium, a small group of collectors that have paid lots and lots of money uh, to have that that painting. Second one there, that the painting is famous because it was stolen, uh, not because of anything outside of that. And again, really the main the main group of collective thought, uh, but because it was stolen. And the last thing is the art historical thing that I want everybody to know is the landscape portion. As you look at Mona Lisa and as you look at, at uh, paintings in the future, notice not just the character or the thing that is in front of you, notice the entire painting as a whole. Uh, take these things out into the world with you. I want you guys to learn something new. If you have a comment, some suggestions, if you have uh, things to say, please throw that down in the comments. Always happy to hear from my classmates questions. Uh, about the lesson throw them down there uh, as always please like subscribe share and send this out to your friends so that everybody can be educated and as always I will see you guys next class later guys